Bringing in both pre-recorded speaking tracks and music is essential to working an audition. We'll remove our test files and import both types of audio into this lesson and make some adjustments to line everything up across tracks. So the first thing we need to do is actually delete speaker A and speaker B from our tracks. So I'm just selecting the clip and hitting the delete key on my keyboard. Notice, of course, if we did want to continue using these auto-recorded tracks, we could do so right here. But I'm actually gonna go to our media browser and into our project, and let's have a look inside of chapter three. So I got a couple things here. I've got speaker A, speaker B, and mix down waves. So the mix down is a little piece of music for our intro and outro. Let's grab this and drag it directly into our music track. All right, Audition smart enough to let us know that there's actually a difference between the sample rate of the music track and the sample rate that we created this session at. Audition volunteers to convert it for us, so let's hit OK. There we go. We also have speaker A right here, so let's bring that into speaker A. And we have speaker B, which is going to be aligned to speaker B. So obviously, everything's overlaying right now. And if we go ahead and play this back. What initially got you interested? It was in the base area. area. It's just a mess. We've got music going on, and both speakers are speaking over one another. So we need to fix that. To do that, we're going to go ahead and let's pull back on this to see what we're dealing with in terms of audio. So one of the big problems here is that this piece of audio actually extends way beyond when we need it. So let's go ahead and just pull that down by hovering over the end of our audio and just pulling it back. So Doing something like this in multi-track mode, this is actually not going to change the precise duration of our clip. If we go ahead and edit this in edit mode, we'll see that it's still as long as it was presented initially. However, what we will do is we can constrain the beginning and end points inside of our session. So this is a non-destructive way of working with files that might be a little too long. Now, speaker A is going to start out, and then speaker B is going to continue as a conversational view. So if you notice, we can actually pull that in just like that and figure out where speaker A and speaker B would ideally kind of stop talking uh, so that you've got speaker A that speaks, then speaker B, speaker A, speaker B, speaker A, and so forth. Of course, there are things we can do to make this even more precise. So one thing we can do is use this tool up here, the razor tool. If I choose that, I can go ahead and cut little pieces, just divide this into parts. So we can see through the waveform here that there is silence here, there is silence there, silence, silence. So we have an alternate way of speaking. And also, if I switch back to my selection tool, I can go ahead and really pull these clips down so that we are very, very precise in our placement. Now, you can do this with pre-recorded clips, and you can also do it with clips that you record live and then edit later on. It's very, very versatile. So I want to figure out which portion of this mixdown I want to use for my intro. So what I'm going to do is hit mute, or this M button, on each of these speaker tracks. So speaker A and speaker B are now muted. And you can see visually that they're now gray. Let's have a listen to this music track. So what I'm going to do is pull this down a little bit and just shove it over there. And then notice we've got this little fade in and fade out, these little squares here. If I click on that and shift it, we see we get a nice, easy fade in here. And that's exactly what I want. Let's pull this back down 
and we'll preview it again. All right, that's pretty good. Now we're gonna want this to stop at some point too and the speaker to take over. So we'll pull that down and once again, let's fade out. All right, so with that, we can unmute both of the speakers and if we select with our selection tool, all the different clips within these tracks, we can then move them all together. And I'm just gonna shift that down until we're right past that intro bit. Now I'm gonna want an outro as well. So I'm gonna actually reuse this same clip. Let's copy it by doing Command or Control C with it selected. And then just shift your playback indicator to somewhere around here and do a command or control V to paste it in. Now, I don't want this to be exactly the same as it was, so let's find another interesting portion of the track to use for our outro. Just using the selection tools to go through and just extend the part of this clip that's visible. And I want something more towards the end here. Great detail. Maybe we can start it somewhere around there. And again, we can fade this in. And for the outro, I want it to sort of overlap with the speaker A track here because she's kind of closing everything out. And then we can let this go for a bit if we want to and fade out again. All right, so if we pull back here, we can see how everything is set up inside of our multi-track mixer. So we have our music track here, and it has two clips. They both fade in and fade out. One sets everything up, and one takes us out. We have speaker A, and we have divided the track into specific miniature little clips here so that we can easily move them around and reposition them so that the conversation flows nicely and there aren't a lot of gaps and things like that between speaking portions. Speaker B we've treated in a similar way. And of course we haven't done anything with our master yet, but it's important to remember that all three of these tracks are actually being output through the master channel. And you can see that right there. <laughs> 